Hey, Chris Murphy here with Murphy Brothers in Boonville, Mississippi. We're going to do another walk around video. Today we're going to be talking about the LS MT468, 68 horsepower MT4 series cab power shuttle, MT468 CPS. This tractor is equipped with the oversized R14 tires, which I really like the look of the tires on this tractor. I love the performance of these tires as well. Uh, this is an add-on. Uh, if your dealer does not have this tire or and you wanted them to get it for you, it would be a little bit more expensive. This is a, definitely an, an add-up or a charge-up for these tires. So let's get started on this walk around here. On the loader, you can see your loader is self-leveling, mechanical self-leveling. So when you pick up your bucket, instead of it coming up like this, it's going to come up and stay level. Bella hay, that kind of thing, the same thing. You have to be careful with the front spear, though. You don't want to be pointed down when you spear your hay. You want to be pointed up a little bit into the bale because a mechanical self-leveling has a natural tendency to kind of, kind of almost go up at the top end to kind of almost come down. So you want to be as up as you can and still get in your bale so you don't go downhill and the bale outrun you. Uh, you might could change the geometry on your spear between here and here, make that a little wider or whatever, and that way you're getting, you don't have as much droop there. Now, on the quick coupler, universal skid steer coupler, just like all of our LS tractors, um, I like the universal skid steer. It's not proprietary. You don't have to come back to me or your LS dealer to buy your attachments. I certainly want your attachment business, but the... Um, you don't have to buy anything special other than universal skid steer attachments. Make sure that you're keeping this pin in that area. Make sure you're keeping that clean. Make sure when you make the make sure when you attach a new attach a new attachment, make sure that the pin is going down in the hole. We've talked about that on several videos. Keep that lubricated, keep it clean. Just from time to time, just work it and make sure it's not, not sticking with you. Keep it cleaned up. On LS loaders, every joint is greased. Everything that moves there, it's all greased. Now, as we move back, we'll come back to the back and talk about the three-point hitch. <coughs> Take the SMV off here because it makes it a little easier, easier to see. Behind here, you've got your washer fluid bottle. You've got three sets of valves, and they are color coordinated like all other LS tractors. I really like that they color coordinate these so you know, okay, I've got it in the black valve, I'm going to use the black lever. Got it in the green valve, I'm going to use the green lever or the blue. Does come standard with rear hitch controls. This one is a little bit different. It's got a keeper here. You pull it out of the keeper, you line up the peg, let it down. If it was running, you could raise it back up. Love that feature right there. Now, these tractors do come standard with draft control or depth control. You can decide how shallow or how deep or how shallow with the green, not the position lever, but the draft lever beside your seat on your hitch. Plow wants to go deeper, deeper, deeper. You pull it back some, it's going to keep it shallower. Okay? Draft will not work, though, until you unlock it. Right there, draft won't work. Draft will work. The higher you have this pinned on this top link, the faster draft is going to react, okay? Hydraulic fluid, I talk about this on every LS video. Your oil is very, very, very clear. Make sure and look at it real good. You do have marks on one side of the stick, not on both, but if you have to add any, you add in the same location. The MT468 does come with telescope and lower links makes it so much easier to hook up and in combination with the rear hitch control you can just about you can hook up by yourself you should be able to hook up by yourself with these two features now once you get this out and pinned you'll just let it down and kind of play with your hitch a little bit and back up and it'll wiggle right in and lock in place it does have heavy stabilizers these stabilizers are very similar to what comes on the on the mt5 the larger series i like the way these stabilizers work they're a lot heavier than what you get on a compact tractor. Does come with a draw bar. Right now it's not in a working position. We've just got it in there tight. It's probably still the same way from coming in from shipping. I've not serviced this tractor out, so it's exactly the way it came in for shipping. You might look, I'm not sure if you can see the width of these tires. Not the tire itself, but the width of the tractor. 
LS ships all their tractors in a van trailer, okay? Even the 100 horse. So all these tires come in, drawn all the way in. I generally, when I sell a tractor that you can adjust, I ask the customer, how wide of an implement are you using? Do you have a preference? How wide do you want it? And then we set it up for what the customer likes. Very simple to do, just a little heavy manpower, okay? Now, you do have rear cab lights. Those lights, you can aim and position those. Rear wiper, rear washer. Very heavy straight through rear end. Not sure if you can see, but you see the blue parts underneath here? That is where your loader is connected to the back axle. Very heavy loaders on LS tractors. I like the way they do those. That really protects your tractor with a long, heavy loader frame and it being tied to the back. Gives you a lot of structural, structural help. Now, get this question a lot on these tires. Murphy, you don't have much clearance right here between the steel fender and this tire. Well, number one, remember, it's all the way narrowed up. As you widen it out, that gap is going get to a little, get, a little, get a little wider. I still like the tire. Up here, you have your fresh air filter. And remember on LS tractors, if you forgot your filters, you've got a filter on both sides of the cab in the same location. But say you forgot it and you got dirt up in the top. Had a hole in the filter and you just fill that whole thing up with dirt. Got a nut here on both sides of the cab. You've got two in the front. Take them out. The top is going to hinge to the back. It's got a prop rod. Get in there with an air gun, whatever. Clean it out real good and replace those filters. So very simple there. LS tractors do have folding mirrors, so if you did hit a limb or a tree or whatever, this will fold back for you and not bend and break. Another thing about an LS tractor I really like, comes standard with two doors. Every cab LS makes that I'm aware of, that I've ever sold, and I've sold a bunch of them, has got doors on both sides. You do have steps on both sides. This tractor comes standard with a toolbox right here. Your loader valve is mounted underneath the bottom very cleanly. You still got a good heavy loader frame. Like most of your other LS tractors, anything with an LS engine, you do have an oil drain plug on both sides. There's a hump in the middle for the drive shaft for the four wheel drive. Drain both oil pan plugs, put them both back in, okay? On your front axle, your steering cylinders, got one on each side of the axle. You grease on both ends of the steering cylinder. You grease your kingpins. And your rear trunnion, right here. And on the front trunnion in the same location up here. Your tie rods are sealed on these. Now, let's go around here and raise the hood. <coughs> To raise the hood on the MT-468, on the left-hand side of the tractor, you just got a little, like a little pull knob, pull it down. Well, pull it down until it unlatches. There again, if you've seen any of these other videos, you've seen any LS tractors, they're all on a strut and it raises up for you. Your, I'm not sure if you can see better here, but you can see your air filter is very easy to get to. Air conditioner condenser, right here, very easy to get to, and you need to clean that out. If you don't clean out your air conditioner condenser, number one, when you're out here bush hogging, your grill, your side panels are gonna get stopped up with old fuzzy, fuzzy grass seeds and that kind of stuff. Wipe that off. Your condenser is gonna catch the, ne the next part of it. When a customer calls and says, my air conditioner's not working, the first thing we tell them is clean out that condenser. Oh, I've done it. Well, they get here and you raise the hood and dirt falls out both sides. So keep this condenser blown out, okay? You do have a screen back here with a wing nut. That, that screen will come out with a loader up. You can take the screen off in the field, but eventually you will have to blow out your radiator. It's the radiator itself, not just the screen. You do have an overflow jug here. But there again, I still like to check at the radiator cap. This is an LS engine. And right behind here, it's got two little wing nuts.
just a push pull plug on the front cover to, uh, to add engine oil. Engine oil dipstick, very easy to see, very easy to check right here. That's got a cable or something. Yeah. Engine oil dipstick, very easy to get to. Fuel filter and a fuel filter. Both of these have drains. So you got your main fuel filter, your primary fuel filter, or, um, you've got a clear bowl on the bottom. If you're seeing dirt, debris, algae, that kind of thing, open it up and drain it. Before you drain this top one, there is a wire coming out of the drain. You follow that wire up to a connector, which on this one we've not run through the shop, it's still zip tied in there real tight. But you see this connector disconnect right here. I can probably still do it. Yeah, disconnect that, open up the drain, Nothing comes out, you can still pump at the top of that filter base and the bleeder for the fuel is on that, on that same fuel filter base. On your fuel tank, y'all have heard me say it, I say it on every time, use the strainer, use the strainer. Don't rest the weight of your funnel and your bucket on that. It'll wind up in the bottom of the tank. If it does, I keep them in stock, but strain your fuel. You don't want something floating around in your tank stopping up your fuel uh, suction side. Thank you. Now, let's get in the cab. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, they've made some changes since the last model. Years ago, this was a XU6168, XU6158. The range was a straight pattern, one, two, neutral, three, four. This is now an H pattern, much, much easier to shift. So you got four ranges and four speeds. Your range is non-synchronized. You mash your clutch, stop, and shift this but you're not gonna be shifting this as often as you're shifting over here. This is synchronized on your speed. You got four speeds in each one of the four ranges. So now I gotta cut. All right, sorry about that, I had to catch my breath. Start back over here in the range. You got four ranges. This is a new shift pattern, it is the H pattern. Much easier to shift than the old straight pattern, just one, two, three, one, two, neutral, three, four. A lot easier shift, I really like that. But when you shift your range, you're gonna mash the clutch completely and you're gonna stop. Then you'll shift your range. Now over here on your speed transmission, you've got four speeds in each one of these, but on the speed over here, you can simply mash your clutch and you can shift from third to first or first to fourth or what any of these four, you can go into any of those while still moving, but you must mash your clutch and mash it completely, not part of the way down, till it stops and then shift. Now on your shuttle shift, this is a power shuttle. So you do not have to clutch it when you go forward, neutral, reverse. You can clutch it if you'd like. Some instances, some applications you're gonna be using, you'll probably need to clutch. Now, how you determine how hard this takes off, how quickly the clutch releases, is gonna be right over here. We'll get you a good picture of it when we get in the cab. But you've got plow mode or road mode. In plow mode, you wouldn't want your clutch to ease off because you're gonna slip it if you've got a plow on the ground or a disc in the ground or pull, hooked to something very heavy. You would want that clutch to release very quickly and then go. So if I'm in plow mode and I do this without clutching, it's gonna take off. If I've got it in road mode and I put it in forward or reverse, it's gonna kinda ease off. So use the plow mode and road mode for your application that you're using, okay? Now, up here on the cluster, 
or on the on the control panel you do have a tilt wheel this is kind of a wedge lock i really like that because you can set it any place you want to whatever's comfortable and wedge lock it in it's not like got certain grooves that it has to sit in you can lock it in anywhere you want to do have your hand throttle and your foot throttle of course you do have separating brakes where you can use those for turning brakes your light controls are here do have your flasher lights here and your fog lights in the grill on this tractor it does come with the auto and manual pto option in the u.s we think of auto as better okay it's it's not in this instance in in my thinking okay when you have the pto in auto and you turn your pto on in auto if you were to raise your three-point hitch or mash your clutch your pto would stop i can't think of an instance where that would be better so you're going to leave it in manual so if you mash your clutch or raise your three-point hitch your pto is still turning until you turn the switch off while we're talking about pto a new feature for the mt4 that the xu xu series didn't have is pto neutral Right here is PTO is in gear, but when I put the PTO in neutral, yellow knob right here, when this is in neutral, I can twist the shaft in the back of the tractor to spline up my PTO shaft from my implement. I don't have to twist the implement around to get to the, to the shaft. Very easy to do, you can do it with one hand, don't do it with the tractor running, of course, but put it in neutral. Now, if you hit the switch and it's in neutral, it's not gonna turn on. So turn your switch back off, put it in gear, then engage the switch okay now there again talking about pto we'll talk about rpm a lot of people buy a new tractor and they say you know i'm going to take care of this tractor this is going to this is going to have to last me a lifetime you know tractors now tractor this size is you know over over 40 45 000 equipped with the tires that it's got and um you've you can't lug it run your rpm once the tractor's warmed up, you've got oil pressure, everything's up to temperature, run those RPMs up there. If I've got a, if I've got a rotary cutter on the back of this thing, I'm gonna pick the rotary cutter up, I'm gonna have it idle just a little above idle, and I'm gonna turn the PTO on. Once your blades spin out and everything kind of smooths out, starts running right, you're gonna bring your RPMs down to where it, on this tractor it's 2410. Most of your LS engines, the PTO speed is 2410 you're you're going to run it at 2410 now if you choose too high of a gear it's going to bring those rpms down so either you adjust your gear or adjust your hand throttle to compensate to keep you at that minimum pto speed that's not a suggestion that is a minimum pto speed you're better off full throttle that's not enough on your rpm when you're using pto now say you're not using the pto talking on rpm you should still run this particular tractor, probably 1,800, 2,000 RPMs, just doing loader work, just doing box blade work, anything, nothing with a drive shaft. Your RPMs being up, the engine is running smoother. Your hydraulic pump is providing the flow and the pressure on demand that you need for different things. Uh, your hydraulics are gonna work more, more um, they're gonna perform more efficiently. The, um, whenever you're, um, when you don't have enough RPMs, nothing is functioning at the spec when you look at specs on a brochure on anybody's tractor the hydraulic flow the horsepower everything else it is measured at pto speed or greater so don't lug your tractor number two reason you don't lug your tractor the more you lug it the more soot you're going to produce and um, the more often it's going to have to regen if you're running it right this tractor is probably going to regen every 50 hours it's going to regen 50 every 50 hours whether it needs it or not but if you're not lugging it much, it's not gonna do regens very often. If you're lugging a lot, or the more you're lugging it, the more often it's gonna have to burn out. So don't lug your engine. I watched a video yesterday, a competitive dealer. He was talking about you know what DPF is and that kind of stuff and oh, how expensive it is and how you have to replace them. We've been selling DPF uh, tractors for, well, since 14. I'm not sure that we've ever had to replace a DPF filter those DPF filters kind of clean themselves. Uh, it's just a honeycomb piece of steel in there. Uh, it's not something that is going to deteriorate like an air filter or something like that. So never had never seen that. It's always been great for us. Uh, and I say always when it first started off, 
uh, many, 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 all the tractor manufacturers had issues because they were going automotive style controls with old tractor style connections and harnesses and that kind of thing. So all of that has really worked out because they've gone automotive style connectors, automotive style harnesses, full length connectors instead of part, parts and pieces put together in different places. So DPF is not something that you should worry about. Um, that being said, let's move on in here. So we talked about the auto and manual. You do have a DPF switch here. When this tractor gets ready to go into regen, on LS tractors, you've got a decal right here on the side. This was written by a dear friend of mine. We can understand. He was from Arkansas, so we can understand the English that he used. But when it goes into DPF or it goes into a regen, you do not have to worry about hitting the switch. The only time you'd hit the switch is if you wanted to inhibit that. We'll get into another video. We need to do a whole other video on just what to expect when that happens. But Leave your, leave your finger off the switch unless you're around a gasoline spill, natural gas leak, something like that. Um, any place you wouldn't want to flick a big light a cigarette, whatever. You're not worried about sage grass, pine needles, dead leaves, that kind of thing. You're worried about something that is highly flammable, okay? Now, your next switch, get this question out. Oh, looks like a flashing beacon. Well, for overseas, that's exactly what it is. This switch is wired. It's wired to the two corners of the cab. You can use that for something else. Make sure and check your load. Make sure it's got enough. Make sure it's got enough fuse, and it'll carry carry what you're putting on it. But they use these overseas. They don't use them here. But you can use it for something else. Now, up here, this tractor does come standard with a radio. You've got a dot right here on the dome light. When the key is on, you can click the dot, and the dome light comes on. You've got front cab lights rear cab lights. Those are the lights at the top of the cab. You've got front wiper, hold it in for wash. Rear wiper, hold it in for wash. You, these switches here have to do with engine speed cruise control. One, two, and three. You've got setting. You can set it for two different ones. Setting one or setting two. Right there is off. Right there is on. And you push it down. When this is on, you will have a little yellow light on the dash and one in the LCD screen that looks like a clock. That's what customers call and tell me. They say, hey, I've got a clock flashing at me. It's not a clock, it's a tachometer. This is ESC, engine speed cruise control. You can set your RPM to a certain number and it, the engine or the computer is gonna to try to keep the engine there. I don't particularly like that because when I'm cutting or when I'm using the tractor and I'm, I wanna see it bog, if it is bogging, that's telling me as the operator, hey, I may need to take a slower gear. I may need to raise my three-point hitch a little bit. I need to do something different to keep my engine and tractor running like it should, along with the implement for the load I'm putting to it. Um, anyway, move on from that. And here again is the plow mode and road mode. It just determines how quickly the clutch releases. We talked on the back about your three point about your auxiliary valves. You've got a green one, a blue one, and a black one. You've got a green set, black set, and blue set. Your green valve on this tractor releases back to neutral. Your blue one releases back to neutral, but your black one will stay constant flow. So we sell a lot of attachments called a lane shark, and a lane shark is a hydraulic cutter that goes on the front. It has to constantly run. So I would normally plumb that to this turn it on, it's gonna stay on until I bring it back to the stop position or neutral. Now, I'm not sure if you can see, but right here, this is auto hitch. I really like this feature. You can't see it from this angle, but my three point hitch control is right here beside my seat and right beside that is the drive control. But if I'm setting my PTO or my three point hitch to cut this high, okay? If I pull this, this lever back, the hitch goes all the way up. When I hit the trip, it's only gonna go down to where I left the position lever at. So it'll go all the way up. But when you hit the trip, only go back down to where you left it the last time. If I'm gonna spend my time bush hogging or whatever, I want it to look good. So I want it to go to the same height. I don't wanna cut some of it this high and some of it this high and some of it this high. I want it to be the same thing. So you set your position, use this, it's very, very neat. Um, Really nothing else on this side of the cab. Um, over here, we've talked about your PTO neutral. We've talked about your range. You do have your, your brake here, your parking brake down, on, down close to the floor. Now your four wheel drive is right here. 
Four wheel drive should shift very easy. Do not use your foot on that. If it doesn't shift, it's just not lined up. The gears are like this. Let it go backwards or forwards a little bit. Let it slide in, you'll be fine. You do have fuses here for inside the cab. This is not running the tractor. This is running you wipers, lights, radio, that kind of thing. Now you can't see it from there, but you do have a very simple air conditioner control right here. You do have here, this is the most important thing. Run it in, re in recirculate, in my opinion. You don't want to bring fresh, dirty air in the cab for you to breathe. Run it on recirculate. With it up like that, that's fresh air. Down is recirculated. It is recirculating inside the cab, and these are sealed cabs. Um, this does have the very nice seat with the adjustable armrest. Forward and aft is here. Recline is here, and you do have suspension right here. We've talked about this in several other videos, but you also have your drop speed control. Drop speed is a needle valve. As I've got it out on the rabbit, unscrewed, righty, righty tighty, lefty loosey, as it's on the rabbit, it's, it's loose, okay? So as I drop my three-point hitch, or if I use the auto hitch and just hit drop, if it's on rabbit, it's gonna fall, okay? As I turn it in and I trip it, it's gonna go slower the more tightly I have that turned in. And I say tightly, the more I have it turned in. And once you get in like this, it's to the lock position. You're not going to want to keep tightening there. But if you've got it locked, you can raise it up. And the three-point hitch will not come down. So you never really want to run it on lock. You can get it slow, but don't run it on lock. And I think that has pretty much got this covered. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure and make comments. We'll try to answer those questions for you. Uh, if you'd like to see other videos, let us know. But thank you for tuning in to another walk around video with Murphy Brothers in Boonville, Mississippi.